Okay, well, today was really rough. I don't know why it took me so damn long to do what little I did today. But, uh, I left the smoke out of the stealth weld. Six-year-old batteries. And totally obliterated the terminal on number one, negative terminal. Where all the electrons come out of, basically. And that explains the sweet taste and smell I was getting when that thing fizzled. It fissioned and just erupted. And my uh, ammonia bladders went to work and self-extinguished uh, within the enclosure with a slate top. So that worked. Now, interesting thing is, trying to replicate, trying to pick up where I left off here to keep the workflow going. I'm using this little AC225 arc welder, Lincoln, and... Uh, Stealth Weld has been through many, many battles, welding together excavators, dozers, tracks, pins, entire sticks and booms on ex excavators, car body work, all kinds of things, and I've got a good solid six years out of that system, which is fantastic, really. Uh, but in trying to duplicate or continue onwards with my workflow here, I cranked that up all the way using Excalibur rod, and um, it was just miserable trying to get it to weld. But I managed to get a bead on there anyway. Not fun. AC-225. And it started snowing here, which is really rare. Anyhow, that'll definitely hold. We'll see. I really should have probably taken this off and corrected the lower angle down here. This lower angle needs to be opened up a little bit on this stirrup. Can't see. Let me see if I can turn on the... Oh, it's not available while using the camera. Let's do figures. Cannot get any good. All right, there it is. So anyway, a little snow action here. Sure got a snoot full of that lead oxide. Strange sweet taste too. Was snowing. It'll come back tonight. So I uh, determined that the retread here was. Well, let me show you. Just in review. I'll have stealth weld fixed here shortly. New batteries, lithium iron oxide ideally. If anybody knows where to get those for a really good deal, let me know. So this retread comes out to 24 and a half inches. And on this side, these are Michelin retreads. Got them up at fast tire. This is 25 inches. Okay. And that is exactly the same Alright, so what that means is that the reason this looks like it sticks out is because, in fact, this retread here is shifted inwards about a half an inch. So, that is that. But what I may do is improve this angle. I will remove that here one of these days when I get some time. And I will open up that joint down there. Cut it on the inside. Spread it open about 3 degrees. Five degrees probably is what it needs. Three to five degrees, so that, that will be a later time. Anyhow, I better uh, wet down that spindle to make sure I didn't uh, waste the lip seal. It definitely got a little hot. Um, of course, I spoiled the nice new paint job on the new wheels there, but uh, I got a can of gray, I don't really care. I need to redo, I'm gonna redo, repaint all these wheels anyhow. So that is that. So, signing off for now, this is CT with CT Machinery Systems, making things happen here, letting the smoke out of the stealth weld today, and managed to reinforce the fixtures that hold these load stabilizer wheels, the TriStar configuration. And even have a nice eyelet on there, should I need it for something else, might even hook up an air shock to that if I wanted to or a hydraulic 
cylinder or even just a uh, a turn uh, buckle hardware if I wanted to add additional tension to this assembly pushing down and this incidentally absorbs impact and load from front or backwards and also presses the tensions downwards on the axles load stabilizing and impact stabilization so all right over and out